right, so our next topic is narrative essays. So let's jump right into it. We're going to go through what you should expect for a narrative essay. I'm going to talk to you about how to set it up and what your prompts are going to look like. So first off, let's just see what we have on the paper. So we've got fiction only. You're not going to get nonfiction pieces for a narrative. Now most people assume that if you are asked to write a narrative, it's going to sound like this. Write about a time in your life when da 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 happened. Or write about a summer, write about your favorite vacation, things like that. The state test narratives are nothing like that. So you're not going to get a prompt all by itself for any of these types of essays and narrative falls into that category as well. They're going to give you a passage or a poem or a short story. They're going to give you something to read and you are going to have to do one of a couple of different things. So here are your options. You can either be asked to complete the story. If they give you a short story and they've cut off the ending, you have to finish out the story, figure out an ending, or they can ask you to write an alternate ending, or they can ask you to rewrite the story or poem or whatever from a different character's point of view. We'll get into all of those in a little bit more detail in a little while. So let's keep going. You do not need evidence for the narrative essay. Now in your other three types of essays, you will use evidence. Now remember, what are we referring to when we say evidence? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What are we referring to when we say evidence? I, I, I didn't hear you one more time. What are we referring to when we say evidence? <gasps> yes, quotes. That's what we're talking about. You don't have to have quotes for narrative, which makes it a lot easier, right? But remember, most people do not get narrative essays on the state test. Pray that you get one because if you do, it's the easiest one to write, but be prepared not to see one. You still need to know how to work it just in case it does show up, but make sure that you're not banking on the fact that you're going to get a narrative. Don't, don't only be prepared for that one, which is why you should watch all of these videos about all of these essays. Now, if we keep going, you see there's no set number of paragraphs here. With a narrative, you're not going to have an introduction and body paragraphs and a conclusion and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't exist. A narrative means you are telling a story. So there will be a beginning, a middle, and an end. It will follow a plot, but there's not going to be thesis statements and all the claims and counterclaims. Those won't happen in a narrative. All right? Personal pronouns are okay. This is the only time where you can include personal pronouns in your writing. Now, what are we talking about with personal pronouns? Well, first or second person, I, me, my, us, our, you, yours, yourself, you cannot use those words anywhere except for a narrative. It's okay here. So you'll see a lot of the rules that you have in place for all your other essays can kind of go away when we get to narratives. Now, your essay's voice and tone must match and it must be relevant to the original passage. Here's an example of what I'm saying. If you were to be given a chapter of, let's say, the Bible, and you were asked to rewrite this chapter, rewrite a scene from whatever excerpt they give you from a different person's point of view, you're not going to write it with a bunch of slang and curse words. That just would not fit because that is not how the Bible is written. What I mean by voice and tone here is that you have to sound like the original author. If you were given an excerpt from one of Shakespeare's plays and you were asked to rewrite this play from a different character's point of view, you would not rewrite it and have a lot of slang and informal language and things like that. You wouldn't include that. You have to match the original author's tone, their voice, their sound. You are using your creative elements here. In a narrative, this is when you need to start employing sensory language. Now remember, sensory language means you're using all five senses to engage in the reading. So you need to use words that appeal to your senses, sight, smell, taste, hear, uh, auditory, and touch, and all these things. You need to have words that make your reader feel like they are there with you. So that's very, very important in a narrative. All right, your last thing, no specific outline. Well, that's pretty obvious. If you don't have specific paragraphs, obviously you're not going to have a specific outline that you have to follow either. That's why this that's why this is the easiest one to write, okay? Now we're going to go over some very specific prompts. I'm going to give you some examples so that you will know how to recognize a narrative when you see it. Okay, so now we're going to go through some different narrative prompts. 
So if we look at the first one here, it says read the story and create an ending or al alternate ending that is relevant to the rest of the story. So let's say that they've given you a short story, they've cut the ending off, you have to now finish it. Well, you need to make sure you do this correctly. You can't just put any random thing and expect it to count. So when it says that you have to make sure it's relevant to the rest of the story, that's what I was talking about earlier. You have to make sure the tone of your revision, your alternate ending, matches the tone of the original passage. So if, if you get a passage that has a lot of scientific jargon, a lot of big words and things like that, it sounds very educated and very formal, your writing needs to do that as well. However, if you get, let's say you get a poem that uses a lot of informal language, a lot of slang and things like that, you would not want to write your ending with all these ginormous words that don't really match the original passage. Your writing needs to blend in with the, with the original as best as you can. That's, con that's called using your writer's voice. So you need to make sure that you can do that. And you can. It just takes a little bit of time and some creative, creative thinking, but you can do that. All right, so our second prompt here, and I have stars by this one because this is the most common type of narrative prompt that you will see. All right, it says, The provided passage is written from the main character's point of view and recounts the night when his family home was burned to the ground. Rewrite the scene from the mother's point of view. This kind of passage would be very vivid in its language and description. Now, they're asking us to rewrite this passage, rewrite this scene from the mother's point of view. So you still need to have the same kind of tone and mood to the passage, but you have to now think as the mother. That doesn't mean that you say, the mother felt blah, blah, blah. No, you have to be the character. You are the mother. Be the character. So you would, you would say, I and my son were in the house uh, that night when it burned down. You would talk as that character. That is the most common prompt, type of prompt that's used for narrative writing in the state test. So if you get a narrative, 90% of the time, it's going to look something like that. Now your third option is here at the bottom. It says, you have been given a poem written by a high school student who witnessed a school shooting during his freshman year. Read the poem and rewrite this boy's story experience in short story format. So, you have been given a poem, all right? And you have to be able to read the poem, understand what it's talking about, and rewrite the story in a short story form. Now, obviously, if you're taking a poem and going to a short story, you're going to have to add a lot of details and information that the poem may not give you. That's okay. Obviously, they know that. They want you to do that. But you still need to match the tone. So if we are reading a poem about someone who witnessed a school shooting, obviously, they're not going to be talking about jumping for joy and running through a meadow of daisies and wildflowers. It's not going to be a happy poem. So your short story needs to have that darkness, that sadness, or whatever kind of emotion the original passage has, or the original poem has, your story needs to have that as well. Okay? So basically that's all there is to narratives, especially with uh, state tests. It's not difficult. Narrative is when you get the chance to be creative. You don't have to use evidence. You don't have to cite. You don't have to have thesis statements and none, none of that stuff. That's why this one's so easy. But again, remember, they can give you any of these four. And it, everybody in your class, everyone who takes the test in the room with you, is not going to have the same essays. You may all have something different. So you have to be prepared for any of the four essays. Okay? Awesome. Now, this is something I have seen once on, uh, on the state test. I've only seen it one time, but uh, that means that they, they do this. Uh, I, well, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, they do all of them, or why the hell am I talking about it? That makes no sense. So, now, if you were given an exam... Um, now, if you were given an excerpt from Huckleberry Finn, no, you're not going to know what that means because y'all haven't read that, so never mind. Scratch that example. Let me come up with another one real quick. Um, if you were given an example of, let me retry that. Um, I 
I forgot what I was gonna say. Can we see? Can you see? Oh my god, chairs are falling over in the den. Then, so, what the hell was I about to say? So, I don't know. And we're also going to go through some tricks for multiple choice questions. So, stay tuned.